here to join us in our daily morning routine. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show the collection and semen processing for two of our stallions. Um, Father Patrick's going to be up first and then followed by Always Be Mickey. So we have a trotter and a pacer. You'll get to see a little bit of difference between the two um, stallions and what they uh, produce in the breeding shed. Each stallion is very different. They have different likes um, and dislikes and we try to cater um, to each stallion so we can get the best performance out of them in the breeding shed. So what you'll notice when we walk into the breeding shed with Father Patrick, his tease mare is actually outside of the shed. He walks in first and then we bring the tease mare in afterwards. The reason why we're doing this is he gets a little bit overexcited if the mare's inside the shed. So we try to keep his excitement level down for the safety of our handlers and everybody who's working around him. Then we'll bring the mare into the shed afterwards. We'll go through and we'll wash him um, when he, right before he's ready to be collected and then we'll collect him. We'll go back into the shed and we will um, process his semen. And then once we're done with him, we'll switch over to Mickey and we'll talk a little bit about Mickey and what he likes and just doesn't like. So if you guys have questions of things that we're doing along the way, please feel free to ask and we will try to answer as best we can as we're going through the process. So first thing we start off is our stallions come into the barn. Patrick's right here in our wash stall. He gets groomed and cleaned up before we go. We don't like them to have a whole lot of mud and, and um, stuff on them when they go into the breeding shed. It could potentially contaminate the semen. So we make sure they're, they're nice and groomed and ready to go. So he's ready and stuff. So we're gonna get going. So we'll see you in the shed. Okay, so right now Father Patrick has entered the shed. Uh, we have our tease mare right here who is in active teasing mode. That's pretty typical behavior. Um, we have the mare for him outside of the stalks. He likes to be able to see the entire mare while he is teasing up and getting ready to be collected. And we, our shed, we're very fortunate. Our shed's quite, quite large, so we have a good amount of space. So we try to keep Patrick on one side of the shed and the mayor on the other. He um, is in the process of getting an erection and we are gonna go wash his penis right now. Warm water and 
cotton, and again, we're just trying to get debris off of his penis um, so that it doesn't contaminate the, the semen. We don't want to send out uh, dirty semen with chunks of dirt in it if it's on his penis, so that's why we wash them in the beginning. Now we're back in the lab. I'm just trying to get this mic on so you can hear me. And so this is Patrick's AV that we use. Each stallion has their own AV. Um, and we collect his ejaculate in a bottle with a bag and a filter on it. Again, the filters to separate any kind of gel he might have or debris. And then we'll go over to the processing side of the lab. So first thing I do is I take the filter out, look to see if he's got any gel. Um, he doesn't. This is our just daily collection record sheet where we keep information on each stallion that's in the shed. So in order to process the semen, we need to know um, how much total sperm he's given us. And so we find that out through the volume of the ejaculate and the concentration. So how many uh, sperm per milliliter are in the ejaculate. So we weigh the, we weigh the ejaculate, and that gives us our volume. So it's 29 cc's. Hold on. There we go. And so now I'm going to take just a really small sample out of his ejaculate, add it to a reagent then that we use for the nuclear counter. This gets our concentration. The interesting thing and the cool thing about the nuclear counter is that it actually lyses the sperm cells and reads the DNA. And so it's the most accurate form of obtaining concentrations um, for ejaculations. That takes about 30 seconds to run. In the meantime, while that's running, I usually get another cup ready to go um, so that I know how to extend the, the semen. So what we do is the horse ejaculates, then we add semen extender to it, and what that does is out the seminal plasma. So in your ejaculate, you've got seminal fluid, seminal plasma, and obviously sperm. Now, some stallions, 
seminal plasmas is a little toxic to the sperm and they don't like living in it that much. So we extend it out. Within the extender, you've got some proteins and some nutrients and some sugars, um, some antibiotics, and it will allow the sperm to live longer than in just um, a raw sample as is. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of math. His concentration was 479 million per mil. So he was quite concentrated. So in his ejaculate today, he gave 13.9 billion sperm, which is a pretty good day for Patrick. So I now have a sheet that helps me with my dilution factors so that I know how to dilute out the semen. And then just a little quick math. So each mare today is going to get 2.8 billion sperm in their dose, which is a pretty good dose. Pretty happy about that for Patrick. So now what I'm doing, I'm just adding raw semen to um, a separate cup because I know how much raw semen I need. And then I'm going to grab extender. This is the extender we use. It's INRA 96. Most people use um, INRA 96. Some stallions like different extenders, but this is the one people use most often. Now I'm just adding the extender up. So we've got three mares today. Pat well, Patrick's got three mares today. So each mare is going to get a 60 cc dose. So I have to go make sure my final um, volume is up to 180 so that I can split it three ways. And then I'm just gonna grab some syringes and some caps. And so I mix the semen back and forth between a couple of cups just to make sure that it's all mixed and it's pretty uniform so that each mare is getting the same amount. Broken the, semen. the leftover raw semen goes down the drain. <laughs> we just pray that the Hamiltonian winners aren't in that raw semen uh, group. Yeah, extra um, semen just goes down the drain. We don't hang on to it. Thanks for asking. That's a good question. So then um, I label each syringe with the horse's name, Father Patrick, and the mare, um, the date it is, and then the mare's tattoo number. And then we walk over to our boxing section over here, and the semen goes into the box. So I got two more syringes to pull up. <laughs> what that we put it down the drain <laughs> yeah it is a little sad it's getting rid of some of the air bubbles there this is for the second mare Patrick has I'm gonna put that in her box And then I need one more syringe. First one was broken. And 
And then the very last thing I do after all the syringes are pulled up and put over in the box, I look under the microscope at the sperm um, that's been extended. It's easier to um, look at it at that point. Watch out, I'm going to get rid of air bubbles. <laughs> Try not to spray anybody that's standing too close. <laughs> yeah. Um, I look at it under the microscope, so I'm looking for the motility of the sperm. So one, I want to make sure the sperm's moving. And then two, I want to um, know of those sperm that are moving, how many of them are moving in a straight line. The ones that move in a straight line are the ones that are going to make it to the oviduct, which is the equivalent of the fallopian tube in the woman. And that's where fertilization um, occurs. So if we've got a lot of sperm that are swimming um, in a straight line, that's, that's very good. If we have some that are circling around, then they're not going to uh, make it to the oviduct. This is Patrick's last one. So, and then just going to get a microscope slide out of here. I don't think you'll be able to see it on the yeah, Facebook Live. We've tried it before. It's hard to get the picture through the camera onto the microscope. And I asked, why do you remove the air bubbles? Oh, yeah. So you don't want to send a lot of air in the semen because if you have a big air bubble, the, the syringe and the the fluid within the syringe, if you will, will bounce around a lot, and then the sperm can hit the side of the, um, the syringe and, and damage the sperm. So you don't want to have a big air bubble in there. So we take them out. That and the other thing, too, is you don't want to be putting a whole lot of air into the mare when you're breeding the mare. His sperm look great. So when we're looking at motilities, we usually uh, do in percentages. So the percent of moving sperm total, that's total motility. And then of those ones that are moving, how many are in a straight line? That's our progressive motility. So you might hear people talk about, oh, he's you know, 50% progressively modal or 60% progressively modal. Um, and that's what they're talking about. Progressive is the ones that are moving in a straight line. And I'd say he's about 80% um, modal, so about 80% of her sperm are moving, and probably 55% of those are moving in a straight line. So that's, uh, that's really good for him, and really for all stallions. So now um, Patrick's done. And we're going to transition into Always Be Mickey. I'm going to switch out papers. Cross Patrick off our list. What we're doing today. Today's the third. And then before we go switch all the way over to Mickey, we have to clean up everything on this side. We wipe down the counters in between um, every stallion. We don't want to have any kind of cross-contamination um, between the stallions and just helps keep everything clean and neat and orderly. Was the virus going on if you see a decline in breeding? You know, that's a great question. And I would say for us, no, we haven't seen a decline in breeding um, just yet. Everybody seems to be um, breeding their mares Probably as they have. We <laughs> yeah. What the only things that really have been sort of effective is, you know, if we're flying the semen going counter to counter, some of the flights have been canceled or cargo's not open at certain airports. So that's become a little bit more of a logistical 
um, issue, but so far we've been, we've been okay in operating as normal. So now we're gonna head back over here where we are um, gonna get Mickey ready. And remember before I said every stallion is their own individual. Mickey has a very large AV. He's a very big horse in all aspects of his life. Okay, we can show the size difference. So, so most stallions will use this size AV and the normal size AV for probably 95% of the stallions. So much bigger much larger um it's he's just a big horse <laughs> all the way around so you guys might be wondering what the stallion handlers are doing right now why i've been in the in the shed processing the semen and and dividing up doses so they've once patrick was done they took him outside and turned him outside in his field and they've come back into the barn and they have started to get Mickey ready. Um, one thing that we do try to cater to the stallion's likes and dislikes and stuff, and one thing that we don't really change too, too much on is the order in which we collect the stallions. Um, so Patrick goes first because he's definitely an alpha type horse, and Mickey goes second because he likes to think about breeding quite a bit. So um, I don't want him to be thinking about it so much because that will cause him to have more seminal fluid and then his ejaculates more dilute and that's not great. So I let him go second um, so he doesn't think about it all morning while he's standing in his um, shed or in his stall. So what I did is I put a little lube on a, a rectal sleeve and I'm now um, putting lube on the inside of his AV. Uh, it's, a, it's a rubber AV so we try to make it very nice and the interesting thing about Mickey is he likes a different lube than the other stallions he's a very uh, particular kind of kind of horse so um, now I'm just gonna get his bottle ready so it's just a world pack bag with a filter in it Get it all ready. So we have the stallions like ba around the same temperature of water to fill their AV. Um, so right now we're at about 118 degrees Fahrenheit for them. And each stallion, for the most part, they like all, they all pretty much like the same temperature. Sweet Lou likes it really hot. So he goes up a little higher than the other boys. Um, and each stallion also has their own weight of the AV that they like. So basically it's the pressure that they'll feel when they're um, in the AV. So we've got a thermometer attached to the sink so we know how warm the water is coming out. And then we fill it on a scale. Um, can someone open the big doors, please? Um, and then I watch the weight go up and then when it gets to a certain weight we have it timed out with the guys of when i'll send mickey um, into the shed so that mickey's not waiting too long and the av's not waiting too long and um, it works out uh, pretty well so i come to this window and i give the thumbs up sign that he's ready to go so mickey will be coming into the shed um, in the next few minutes this is a long question so you might have to Okay. Um, talking about cows, with bulls, they can make 200 straws sometimes per one collection. Yep. The industry standard cattle is 1.2 million cells per straw is frozen. Is the extreme difference a factor of the insemination techniques of cattle or the more precise estrus detection or what? So, my, my so are they talking about like frozen semen on bulls? I think so. Like, is there, why is there so, why can you get 200 straws from cows versus like, Four straws from horses. Uh, a lot is a lot is going to have to do with testicular size, and testicles in bulls are a lot bigger than testicles in horses. 
So, and for our industry standard for frozen semen to send out straws, um, that's really going to be dependent on um, how many straws you get per ejaculate is dependent on the horse and their testicular size. Us, we like to send out, um, it's about 800 million total sperm in a frozen semen dose. Um, that's what we do. When we send out fresh cooled samples here, um, Back, like when I first got out of school and stuff, you'd want to send one billion total sperm, so you'd end up with about 500 million progressively modal sperm. And we have tried to increase that, again, stallion dependent, um, up to two billion total sperm, so you get one billion progressively modal sperm. So a lot depends on the horse and or the bull as they're... Um, going in their testicular size. When we collect all our different stallions, we get different um, volumes and concentrations of ejaculates and stuff, and a lot of it is just dependent on each stallion. So now we're going to go into, so I hope that answered your question. Um, we're going to go into the shed now, and Mickey's in there, and Mickey teases up against the mare, so the mare is in our stocks, and he's allowed to tease up next to her and sniff on her. Um, he does have a propensity to squeal, um, so if you're, just to forewarn you, it's sort of a loud, high-pitched squeal, but if you hear it, that's normal for him. now we're watching when we did the virtual open house we talked about our dummy beam hydraulic so that we can set it to different heights for each stallion and then it also drops down which simulates the mare in the wild walking away from the stallion because when the stallion is done in the wild the mare actually walks forward and the stallion gets off uh, her that way so now we're going to go back into the lab and do the same process So we talked about Mickey having a larger AV um, than most of our stallions. Um, again, he's got just a larger penis. He's got bigger testicles. 
and you can, I don't know if you can see very well, but pretty much the whole good portion of the bag is full. So, and that's pretty typical for Mickey. So we'll see what he gave us today. So he's got a little gel, not not too bad. We right now there are uh, foaling mares around him that are coming into their full heat, so he enjoys having the mares close by. You know, stallions are so interesting. Um, you know, they're so different, they're so unique. And Mickey, this is his fourth year standing stud with us and we love him to death and we're really excited for his first crop this year. Hopefully, you know, we can all get through this and get back to the racetracks and stuff. So we're excited for his first crop to come, but you know, he's been here for four years and every year he sort of had a little bit of a different personality. So it's been really fun and challenging at times to try to <laughs> figure him out so that he can have the best experience while he's here with us. Okay, so his volume is 131 cc's, and if you remember, Patrick's was only 29. So uh, right there is the difference. Okay, now we gotta get his concentration. Okay. Just put that in there. Okay. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to grab out a couple of cups and So he's a little bit more dilute than Patrick, but we will be okay with that. So he gave us 13.8 billion sperm today, which is more than enough for his three mares. Okay. Now we're going to do the same process again. We're going to put his raw ejaculate in the cup. So someone earlier was asking, what do I do with the leftover semen? And the, the end answer is usually, yes, I throw it down, down the drain. But I, I keep it in case, until I'm done processing all the... Uh, syringes and stuff just in case one accidentally fell on the floor or if I was clumsy and knocked over the cup I've got a little extra you know behind so I don't throw it out right away and this one's sad because we are going to be tossing quite a bit of you know Pepsi North America Cup winners or Meadowlands Pace or Breeders Crown Champion we got big dreams for Mickey and his offspring So that's actually a great question. Um, so we do the best that we we can. And I, having been here, this is my fourth season here at, at Diamond Creek, I have very detailed records. And I know that ideally, yes, I would love to send out between one and two billion total sperm per mare. And sometimes that's not feasible. Um, I will go down to a little bit of a lower dose if I have to knowing that certain stallions can still get their mares pregnant with fewer sperm. If um, I really had not enough sperm at all, 
we would probably consider double jumping them, jumping them, you know, in the morning and then again in the afternoon to get um, more sperm to cover their mares. And if that was a trend that continued to happen, we would reevaluate the management of the stallion and um, think about, you know, does he have too many mares? Is it too many mares for him to handle right now? Um, you know, is he around mares? Is he not around mares? What, what does he need to help get his numbers back up to a more acceptable level? Um, there's two. Okay, first yeah. one. Is there a reason you can't freeze the leftover semen? Or a reason you don't? Okay, so, yes. In order to freeze semen, it's not as easy as just extending it out and putting it actually in the freezer. Right, yeah, you can't do it in an ice cube tray. Although, like, if we could, it would be easier, but we would probably put some freezing companies out of business if that was the case. It's a whole long process to actually freeze semen. Um, you need some special equipment, um, and you need a special uh, freezer. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a freezer that drops the temperature in a slow progression so it doesn't kill the sperm. So that's a, freezing is a whole different ball of wax. What's the protocol or is there a protocol if a stallion just never has an interest in breeding? Oh, so like has low libido. Yeah. So libido just refers to um, the stallion's interest in mares and breeding and stuff like that. So a uh, couple different things. If he's got low libido, I would put him out around mares and get him to look at mares and see mares. Um, that usually helps uh, pique their interest some. Um, other things that you can do is, is you can play a little bit around with what order they go into the breeding shed. Um, some stallions, you know, if they've got a low libido, you might put them at the end so that if you've got some, uh, if you have to wait a long, wait a little bit more time, then you can um, do that there. I would get, I would find a mare that he actually really likes and keep a real close eye on her to have her be in the shed as much as possible. Um, I'd try to have a mare that was right on top of ovulation because um, stallions that have low libido are more receptive to those mares um, than mares that are just coming in to heat or mares who have just ovulated you know mares will ovulate and show signs of heat for a day or two after the fact um you know i would do that things like that i would decrease the noise around the breeding shed like springtime is here and people are mowing their grass i wouldn't be mowing around the breeding shed while the horse is in there you might think about turning out the lights making sure you have minimum number of people in the breeding shed um so some of those things might uh help uh bring him along and sometimes you just you you're gonna have a slow breeder and you can try all those things and it doesn't work other things that we we've tried is you switch out tease mares like you bring in one mare and he doesn't really like her so we'll bring him to the back corner um of the breeding shed and bring a different mare in and sometimes just watching the mares um walk uh gets them excited uh, you have to think about what the stallion actually prefers. You know, for us, like Patrick likes to see the entire mare when he teases. Mickey wants to be up on top of the, the mare. You know, if you've got a timid mare, you know, maybe it's better to have the mare in the stock so that if she squeals a little bit or something, he's not thinking he's going to get kicked. Um, you know, you have to play around with kind of different things to figure out what uh, might work best for him. Okay, that's a great question. This is my last Mickey dose. Um, so when I was in vet school, um, I got really interested in equine reproduction and breeding and neonatology and such. And so when I was in vet school, I kind of did everything I could to get as much experience in that field as possible. And then when I graduated from school, I did an internship at a thoroughbred breeding farm. And then I went to a breeding farm at, um, in Hanover, Pennsylvania, Hanover Shoe Farms. I was there for a while. And then I came to Diamond Creek. So everything I did 
um, in my career, I've tried to really hone in on breeding farms and being around breeding. And so whatever you can do to put yourself in that situation, there are a lot of programs that have internships and, and such for undergraduate students where you can just be immersed into the breeding farm um, so that you can uh, get a job later on at a, at a farm, so. So, okay. Well, I think that concludes our um, breeding demo for the day. And I wanna thank everybody for tuning in and you know, stay safe, stay home as much as you can, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>